Hello, Victoria. Good morning. Hi, how are you? Good, good how are you? you? Uh, good. Um, so I just have a couple questions for you guys on behalf of the TV Um, So what kind of preparation did you do for the role? Did you meet with people who suffer from bipolar disorder? And did, did you meet with um, neurosurgeons? Neuro, uh, Yes, I definitely met with a lot of people, um, not just people who suffer from the disorder, but um, people who treat, uh, who work within the field, uh, bipolar centers and treatment centers. And um, uh, it was an ongoing process. I mean, I, I started prep for this part probably f really f five months before we started filming to sort of um, to thoroughly um, vet myself to make sure I knew uh, that I was going to be honoring this very real and very um, extraordinary disease that that can that can be very often very tragic but also can be very um, extra an extraordinary gift as well as a, um, a, a, a terrible thing to suffer with um, I got to find out about both sides which was very valuable for this character to portray this this character as truthfully as I could Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I, sorry. No, go ahead. No, my preparation was a little different. Um, firstly, I didn't have um, a great deal of lead time, um, but I also uh, I read a lot of papers uh, by neurosurgeons just to get a feel of who they were and what was important to them. I read up about how. Uh, but I mean, part of what was important to them was also the the way they relax, the way they get away from the intensity of doing what they're doing. And I thought that was a really important clue to the character. Um, all the the nuts and bolts of the the surgeries would would take care of themselves uh, on set. But I I really felt like finding the character in um, in these papers and in these words. I thought that was that was um, that was where I went down. That's the path that I went down. Mm -hmm. um, so the show features some interesting neurological disorders. What have been your favorite disorders that we'll see on the show this season? Oh, there's so many of them. There are some very beautiful ones. There's one a woman who she's um, she's blind, but she has hallucinations where she can see things and 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 things that are quite extraordinary she can see she has visions almost but they're very palpable they're very real and um, instead of Catherine thinking that that's a problem she actually thinks it's a gift and 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 so this, it, this isn't harmful to you I mean I we could get rid of it with drugs but do you want me to get rid of it and 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 so this woman ends up just living with these visions it doesn't harm her life and that's sort of progressive doctor that she is she sort of thinks beyond science in a way she sort of really tries to think about how somebody can live a happier life with with the problems that are presented um, there are many very very bizarre cases There's in in the <clears throat> in the pilot episode um, we'll see a you know a woman who has created a character who is a, a dwarf character called Yojo. Yeah, she has an invisible friend. An invisible friend that that once the episode, I think we, we get to a point where we realize that she's created, her brain has created that character because she's lonely. And what is the, what is the best way to, to treat that? Is it to... Um, is it get rid of the hallucinations because yeah, we uh, think of hallucinations are negative or leave her with someone who makes her happy and so and again that was uh, that's Catherine's call and she she diagnosed that and she is progressive in that way and, and um, imposes an the, 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 the question to us and to the audience and I think to medicate or not to medicate <laughs> and that's the question that she has for herself as well because she is bipolar and she suffers with the dilemma of taking her medication or not and which is the real her. How does she work through her disease as the show progresses? She works through the, her disease um, minute by minute. Um, 
it's much like being an addict. You're, it's something that's going to be there for the rest of her life. And there are good days and there are bad days. There are days where I think she can begin to come to terms with her illness and take responsibility for it and, and commit herself to a, a, um, handling it in the healthiest way. And there are days where she wants to blow it all off and just live in this very raw place that, um, that she can exist when she's off her medication. She's hypermania. Bipolar can be from life-threatening, crippling depression to excessive mania, on the other hand, and, and they kind of bounce in between the other. And, 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 and Catherine's mania is filled with energy and vitality and life force, and, and, and um, she has hallucinations also, um, and some of them that she enjoys and others that pre present very dangerous situations in her life. And she makes decisions that she would not normally make and um, lives very much on the edge and could kill her. So she lives, she sort of walks a tightrope. But when she takes her medication, she's very, very able and um, brilliant. Mm. Catherine and Bickman have a very strange chemistry. Uh, what can you tell us about their relationship? What do you mean by strange? They seem like they've known each other for a while, but they've only just met. <laughs> That's interesting. Well, I think they are very similar animals in the way they work together. I mean, they, they're both driven by the work and they both live in that atmosphere. Like if they, they, if they didn't have it, they couldn't breathe anymore. And I think they That's have right, that in yeah. common. Yeah, absolutely. I think the work is the penultimate and uh, this is why they're, they're put here and they've put, they have sacrificed so much in their lives in order to get to this uh, this point in their lives, in this position, and being, you know, at the standard that they are, and um, and so th yeah, they understand. There's not too many people that they meet who have sacrificed so much, and they are both relatively young. I think relatively. Re <laughs> <laughs> and you know, to be in that profession and. And to be uh, at such a standard, so yeah, I think they they find a sparring partner. They find yeah, it's not a always it's not an easy find. road. No, they they get they they get under each other's skin because they push each other's buttons, um, and and also their similarities sort of end there because you I'd say Bickman, um, he's very I mean you just you describe him better than me but I I would say Catherine is much more feeling based she's very she's very feminine she's very soft she's very uses her intuition she's um, she's very compassionate whereas I think you you get it done you open up the brain you yeah. take it out you fix it and I job think, done I think feelings feelings have always hurt yeah uh, they get in the way and they do get in the way and that's uh, that's his mantra that they get in the way and I think that's something that he's learned from a very young age to be able to protect himself and so and Catherine um, is all about feeling feeling anything feeling something so it's a good yeah. they're, they're a good couple to watch together um, so I just have one more question for you guys. What can you tell us about the premiere this Thursday? Well, it's going to be on at 10 o'clock on uh, ABC. We know that. It's a dynamite first episode. Um, when you're introducing a new, uh, a new show, the first season, you're introducing a lot of characters. You're setting up the premise, the story. And, uh, and this first episode, I feel like we kind of took a little bit of a rebel road with it. We really exposed the dynamite of, of, of Catherine's mania before we set up the cube, before we set her up as where we see her mostly, which is medicated. She only goes off her medication a couple of times in the whole season. Um, and the first episode is a very explicit uh, journey into that. Um, so it sort of hits you over the head. It's quite an explosive episode. It's but very it's, visual. Yeah, it's very visual. It's very uh, dynamic and alive. It's got a but wonderful it, soundtrack to it. But it's it's not necessarily the show you're going to see. Every every episode is this episode unto itself and very unique. So it it's not like oh this is the ep this is the show we're going to see every week. It keeps you on 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 your toes, which as an audience member I think is very I think is very unique. Mm -hmm. Um, that's all I have for you guys. Thank you so much for speaking with me. Thank, Thank you. you.